Well, hello everyone, and welcome to my review of Kingdom Death Monster 1.5. So, uh, this is a big box, so let's actually uh, open it up and uh, get right to it. Oh, but, well, first, if I zoom out, because I... Because uh, I've seen many uh, of these unboxing videos and I can tell you this much that this box is actually quite big and uh, cameras don't actually give you a good example of how big it is. So if I move this over to a corner and uh, put my Wonder Woman DVD or Blu-ray right here, uh, yeah, it's still got quite a bit of uh, space right here and still going, still going, still going to the way end. Yeah. So, uh, if I, I don't know if my camera can really see. So, well, that's the edge of the Blu-ray, and that's the edge of the box. So it is actually pretty big and quite heavy as well. Uh, yeah, almost about the same length twice as well. So now let's have a really good look what's inside. So we start off with the rule book. This is the hardback cover. Uh, in the f uh, first edition one, it was just a softback, but in the 1.5 edition, it's hardback. And we'll open it up, and uh, we'll see nice little artwork right there. It, it's it's all pretty straightforward actually, right at the beginning, which I quite like. It tells you um, a little bit of introduction and how to play, which I really really do like. A little bit of uh, story of a uh, uh, little bit of, you know just get into the game and all that stuff so if we kind of skip that bit and we'll just go straight to the um, part where it's got the first story it tells you that you should actually do this bit first and uh, then you can get started it tells you to assemble the miniatures right here uh, the four starting uh, survivors and the monster known as the white lion uh, literally, I do like this uh, startup. It's really, really good, and it kind of gives you the idea. And if you've never actually seen other people play it, or you've uh, actually have uh, played a little bit of a demo on it, then uh, you can actually kind of skip the first bits. I, I say could. I mean, it's still a nice uh, read just to make sure that you have everything that you know of. I. I, I would still recommend if it, if you haven't actually played a demo of it or watched other people play it, then literally do this exactly as it says in the book. And uh, eventually, after a good number of pages, he will get to really understand how to play. As it comes down to. Uh, the survivors it tells you how to use your survivors properly and what bits are what etc etc and um, next one is uh, the monsters itself and so on and so on it goes, uh, tells you how to use the monsters properly and uh, the resources using the terrain the hunt event phase and the showdown phase the showdown phase is pretty big actually and uh, then it comes down to the um, settlement phase and you're done. Okay, when I say you're done, uh, I mean that is actually quite a bit of reading there. It took me uh, a good number of uh, days, only because I'm a uh, very, very slow reader, making sure I've got everything correct. But still, I wanted to not actually play it until I've read the, all the rules fully. So in, in that way, it's like when you actually do the first story part, then it's kind of like you have to just stop where you are and then just go ahead and read the rest of the rules. <sighs> but like I said, if you haven't demoed or watched other people play, then it is a good idea to do the first bit so you get a good understanding of the rest of the rules. There you have it. It's really quite simple. The rest is, um, oh, you don't actually have to read because it's all, well, uh, things that will happen and, uh, well, everything else. All the story bits. It, it's really, really good. I, I like I like it. And uh, there you go. That's the back. Uh, oh, you also got uh, two little 
book tassels as well just to come with it which I like nice here we have the well this is the hunt board it's quite solid it's very very nice and uh, there you go it gives you the start and uh, you just make your way across where the monster is and on the back is well the upside down settlement phase there you go that might be a little bit better and uh yeah so all very nice and solid gives you uh, exactly what you uh, need to do there you go put all your innovation cards up there and settlement locations for you to build new weapons and armor and equipment right so this is the showdown board it is a very 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 big board uh, if you have a small table, this will not go on your small little table. You may have to play it on the floor. If you have a big table, then that's actually a good thing. I would say that the board size is, let's see, what is it? 24 uh, inches and... Uh, I don't know what the other bit is. I'd say about, uh, if I say about 40, maybe that might be right. It, it, it is a, a very big board. Uh, of course, I, I use inches because, well, not everyone uses the awesome metric system. Plus, I, I, I play lots of uh, Warhammer and 40k, so, well, I used to play lots of uh, Warhammer, but anyway this this part is part of the board as well so that's added an extra few inches to it because you have your hit location deck it's like where you hit the monster and yeah monster ai is like what happens when the monster does something you just draw a card and that's what it do and uh other bits and pieces where you just place the cards so yeah something that's a little bit added it's it is it is not like thick card or anything it, well it's thick ish but it's not like strong so that uh, it, uh, i think that's fine i think that's fine and now we go straight into the box itself well we don't actually go into it but it's already open if i go from left to right i think that would be uh okay now uh, it is a very long game. I haven't even yet completed it. I, I've been do, busy doing a lot of other things that I actually need to do. But in my spare time, when I do get spare time, I do get to play this. And uh, sometimes I'm laughing, sometimes I'm crying. Mostly I'm crying <laughs> because the amount, amount of survivors that I have lost uh, is quite big. And... Uh, However, I am actually getting them back, so that's that's really nice. This is the settlement sheet where you get to name your settlement, and it just tells you the well, uh, what what's coming up and what you need to do. Maybe you might have to add some stories to it. That's fine. It's uh, innovations of uh, your own settlement. It, 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 this is all good. It's all good. It's uh, double-sided too, so that's the back. So there you go. So, I don't know how, how good this is coming up on camera. I don't know if it's too dark here. Uh, well, it doesn't. I'm sure I can actually do something. Uh, there's the Nemesis monsters. That's great and all. If I put that to one side, I haven't quite finished with this just yet. I want to show you the character sheet. This is the character sheet. It is just one-sided, so you put any notes on the back. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, actually. So, yeah, I like, I like that. Right, so from left to right. Here, I have placed the monsters and nemesis uh, and like the bosses, uh, AI, hunt cards, resources, and uh, did I say AI? Oh, hit locations, there you go. On this side, that's them. 
there's still more space to go for expansions for example and here uh, like I said there could be a bit more for expansions for more monsters and all that stuff but I've just mainly put some of the basic hunt events and basic resources fighting arts etc etc here and uh, <coughs> while I've got a bit of space right here I've got uh, things that I don't really need to put back in its piles because that's the ones that I'm actually using right now uh, it's a pretty convenient space really if I move on you can see I've got tokens 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 and right there it are dice so that's all the token slots if I show you these this is uh, part of the survivors as well so you put your items right here gives you a, a little bit for uh, a example of uh, what your survivors will do anyway so that's nice and if I keep moving on so here we have the uh, settlement locations of which you can build and use to not only build uh, items and equipment uh, that's not a settlement event location but uh, let's just say uh, these are the ones that I've got at the moment and these are the ones that I don't have there's, there's a good number of, of them in there next we've got uh, big tokens right here and also settlement events some of them are mean, some of them are really mean, some of them are too cruel to use and some of them are, all, are fine and it's the ones that you were uh, one are just fine is the ones that you really really want right next we have more tokens uh, like terrain tokens really that's good and uh, over here I have put all the uh, item cards along there so uh, there's plenty of space and there's still plenty more space um, yeah, it's kind of gone a bit weird down here but that's because it's 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 not all like kind of put together really squashed 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 together there you go so it can be kind of loose there but I'm not going to complain there's still plenty of room for expansions okay so now we come on to the well the more uh, expensive part of the game the models themselves it comes in a big box like this well let's zoom out a bit so this is the big box itself it's actually inside it kind of comes into the inside of the game itself that's probably why the, the game is quite big and tall anyway it, it's a, a simple box it contains a lot of minis now I have actually oh well, I have actually already made quite a bit already and uh, that's really it now I, there's plenty of gaps in there like I said I have actually made quite a bit of them all I haven't made them all I haven't made the two bosses the watcher and the gold smoke knight actually I also haven't made the other two uh, 1.5 survivors either but uh, this can give you an idea of what's actually in here there's a, a lot of pieces in here it, mainly it's all about putting them on the survivors really yeah, you just glue them on and that's it plenty of bits and pieces now let's actually have a look at these models shall we here are the four basic survivors that I uh, well kind of tried to put together uh, as best as I could well, well, that no, I'd say uh, the best that I could have gotten, like anyone else. I would say that these two were the easiest, and these two were the next hardest. You may not think so, but this bit right here was very very annoying and this bit right here was also very annoying and I had put them onto the face bases just because uh, the starting survivors are the ones that you normally 
use practically all, all the way through if you can't be able to uh, just go ahead and build up some other models for your survivors uh, and plus these are the ones that you start off with anyway so that's what I thought uh, face bases it, it looks looks good because you don't actually have to use these ones at all you can use the plain uh, simple base which can be a little bit more easier when you're putting them onto their bases as they'll stand up better now which one was it that couldn't stand up on their face bases all that well I think it was you well never mind let's have a look at the next ones so these were the intimacy models they were more of like a special thank you from uh, Adam Poots's first Kickstarter of Kingdom Death Monster and uh, you know I, I quite like these models uh, they're pretty good um, I can't quite remember which one was the more awkward one of putting together I think it was but then again who knows I don't remember maybe uh, I've lost all that memory of all that frustration huh anyway uh, like I said, I've used the um, face bases models just because uh, normally you'd, yeah, you'd actually see them with the face bases models on there. Anyway. So let's have a look at the next lot, shall we? Right, so next one is, well, everyone's old favourite, the white line. It's the one that you s just bite straight away, just like that. Uh, he was pretty alright, I guess, to uh, put together. Uh, I kind of made a little mistake near the end bit here, but pff, not, not much I can do about that. Well, probably is, it's like uh, the filling and all that stuff, green stuff, uh, modelling clay. Uh, yeah, I quite like it. You know, so. Why is a white lion, as it were, a monster? Because it's bigger than a human. It's much bigger. Woof. Oh, and it also has these uh, hand claws, as it were, instead of proper paws. So that is, that is why it is an actual monster. Huge, massive lion. Next up is called the Screaming Antelope. Uh, huh. it. I don't think I really had much troubles apart from putting it on its base. Yeah, that's the only troublesome part I actually had. But from that, it's quite solid. Uh, a huge tower, and of course, a big open is mouth. <laughs> yeah, this is where it starts eating people right there and it gobbles them up in its mouth. In its artwork, it shows it's got hands that kind of grab the survivors up and then pulls them into its mouth while it gobbles them away. It doesn't actually have any uh, hands, really. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. I just saw them right there. See, little, little hands. It'll just pull them up. I never noticed them until now. Yes. Hmm. But well, anyway. Uh, yeah, quite simple to put together. Just a little bit annoying to put it on its base. You might want to try and have something that's here. You know, it's just to rest it on and leave it to dry for a good hour or so. Next we have, well, the butcherer. I... Oh, uh, I fought the butcher and I lost, which was horrible because I was doing so well. I was wounding him and wounding him and wounding him, and then all of a sudden couldn't wound him, and he was really chopping up my people. And when I say chopping up, I mean bleed tokens, bleed tokens, bleed tokens. Bleed tokens. Oh yeah, the, the our, our way of the dying is uh, if you have about five bleed tokens, then your survivor will die. Now this one was a tricky one to put together but not all that tricky uh, I, I mean the trickiest part was probably his uh, spikes right there 
no, I mean, helm. Like the the tusks bit right here at the bottom, and uh, the uh, giant boar tusks as well. Uh, you could probably see that it's a little bit slightly out of place, but it's 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 fine really. It's all in total, yeah, it's a pretty easy, simple model. Right, next we have the Kingsman, and uh, uh, well, yeah, he is kind of simple. I, I mean, the only hardest part was the sword scabbard was just well, it did not want to do stay in position, and his plume. Well, that was a little annoying as well. But apart from that, everything was quite easy, and uh, it is quite uh, a nice looking model as well. I like. Right, so here is the uh, the hand. Right, what can I say about him? Well, let's just say that there was one part that was missing. However, thankfully, because I I look in uh, Board Game Geek, a very very useful website. And it's uh, there's a few people that's happened to them, and it was just this part, the 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 uh, collar part, I guess. I think. Anyway, that bit was missing from its view. However, it was actually found in the box of the miniature assembly box. I had to take out a lot of spews just to get to it. Well, actually, to find it first, then get to it. Anyway, uh, apart from that. It was kind of a simple model, I think, uh, from just near the top, it was a little bit more tricky because I think some place pieces were not in place properly. Uh, you might be able to see from there, it's, it's, it is a gap, but at the same time, uh, not much I could have done about that. Last model I'm going to show you is the Phoenix. It is a huge, big creature, and it is quite amazing. The size of it just is pretty big. Pretty big? Oh, yeah, I'm saying pretty big. Right, so, was this a hard monster to put together? No, was it the longest? Uh, I think maybe. I'd say maybe. And it would have been completely tricky if it wasn't for the um, build dot kingdom death monster um, website that they have up. It's the official website of putting the creatures together, mainly because. It's all these hands that you can see. They're all individual. Well, not all of them. Some of them are actually pre-done. But uh, there was a lot, a lot of hands in there. And it's just so awkward. Very awkward. But eventually, uh, I got them all glued on. It is a really, really nice looking model as well. I mean, just wow. Feels quite solid, solid too. So, yeah, very, very nice. So there you have it. That was Kingdom Death Monster, version one point five. So what do I think of it? Well, considering what I've actually been saying, it sounds really, 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 really good. But now oh, this is the part where I will have to at least give it some bad points. The bad points are that the box can be a bit too big and I haven't quite figured out uh, where it's going to go into my gaming cupboard mm, which is kind of a shame. Uh, uh, I literally thought it might be just a little bit more small but it wasn't. Okay, you may think that was the only bad point but there's a few more. 
For example, that some of the miniatures were so awkward to put together. There are no instructions in there at all. You do have to really go ahead and go onto Vibrant Lantern or the Build Kingdom Death Monster uh, website itself. Uh, let's see, what other bits is there? This is not a quick game. This is definitely not a quick game, so if you want to play quick games, you wouldn't really be playing this. Uh, or, or you might be able to get away with like a uh, I don't know, one single hunt fight or something like that uh, with some uh, items. Yes, if you want, but really, there's there's no rules in uh, how to do that. So there are some variant uh, rules in the booklet itself which is nice I suppose it is a one to four player but one of the variants well actually one variant is actually one player mode which there isn't a lot of uh, rules to discuss from that and uh, uh, the five to six player mode well I read it and it seemed hard and when I was reading other people's views about 5-6 to six players they say it's very very hard in the early years that is uh, when it comes down to later years it just becomes much much easier well I wouldn't know <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure there's another uh, point oh yes you can't really do a lot of travelling with this, not only because the box is big, but it is also heavy, and if you put the monsters together, you'd need some kind of uh, carrying case, and if you put the, the phoenix together, you'd need to have uh, at least a big space for the phoenix. So, you know, in case the models are going to break, you'd also not need to bring some glue, whether it's super glue or plastic glue. Right, so these are the bad points. The good points, however, it's an amazing game. Uh, it, I, I'm, I feel quite happy just playing it, even when my survivors die. I, I, I laugh and cry at the same time. Uh, I'm shocked and not surprised at the same time. I mean, it's really, really good. Even when you're just fighting on that same showdown board again and again, just for fighting a monster, it 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 still feels different in a way. Well, anyway, like like I said, I haven't even completed this. But, oh, I've got uh, lots of other stuff that needs to be done. Uh, how would I rate this? Uh, I I mean, uh, okay, it's it's almost impossible to. Uh, Bring it to other people's houses or places or, or something like that. Uh, but it is still a really good game, uh, and even when all your friends uh, or your players, as it were, just like busy, it's still got one player mode. Uh, your one player mode can be completely different to. A group play mode, or even one play mode, could be completely different to another person's one play mode. It, it, it's you get a lot out of this game, no matter what. It, it, yeah, you have three monsters, monsters that you can hunt, but still, that's uh, that's fine with me. You get a lot. So, my rating for this game will have to be a. Mm -hmm, uh, I'm gonna have to give it a. 9.8 out of 10. I would have loved to give it a 10 out of 10, but traveling just makes it a little bit more harder. That's 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 how I go. Uh, and, and I do love this game a lot. I knew I was gonna love this game. Uh, okay, uh, the, another bad point is it's not for young kids, but I think that's kind of self explanatory. So uh, that's all I have for this. Uh, yeah, that's really it. So, thank you very much. Until then, bye.